All right, welcome to the very first lecture on pharmacodynamics. This is the first lecture is basic pharmacological responses. Today we are going to discuss. All right, so these are the objectives for this lecture, and today we're going to discuss in this lecture the basic receptor theory. Okay, so some of the pharmacodynamic concepts which are basic receptor theory, um, and it mainly goes with the law of mass action and basic pharmacological equations and underneath it we're going to discuss about the health function and health coefficient receptor effector heterogeneity all right before we go into the pharmacodynamic concepts you are you already went through the pharmacokinetic lectures right so in simple the definition of the pharmacokinetics is what body does to the drug when you you know take a drug orally so what the body is doing it is absorbing the drug and it is distributing the drug right and it is metabolizing and finally it's getting right up it's getting right up getting out of the body via excretion pattern right so what drug is doing to the body because that is most important for us what you know because we are taking the drug either you know to treat a disease or to you know, treat any of our ailment right so what drug is doing to the body is it is covered in the pharmacodynamics it's a study of the time course of the biological effects of the drug i mean the relationship of effects to drug exposure and it also covers the mechanism of drug action okay so let's start with a very simple mechanism of action very simple mechanism of action so as you can see simple mechanism of action means like you know or antacid intake I mean for example a patient is suffering with you know acidity so in the GI tract as you are aware in the GI tract imagine this is a GI tract my writing is pretty bad guys so in the GI tract you know your, your protons are secreted like H plus ions combine with your chloride ions to form HCl so this is ultimately like you know uh, patients who are suffering with acidity means like their know either HCl I mean the acidic conditions or the pH in their GI tract is is normal patient the normal uh, humans so how do you neutralize how do you counteract this like either you stop the H plus or you neutralize once the drug is in the body you neutralize it right so we usually take the antacids like such as magnesium hydroxide or aluminum hydroxide or combination so what it does is it neutralizes this you know acidic conditions and the patient is you know will feel relief but this is pretty basic basic guys very basic uh, you know mechanisms here but most of the times what happens is the drug which we take it binds with the receptors the drug binds with the receptors to form a drug receptor complex and it finally alters the it finally you know alters the mechanism I mean it form some kind of function which you which the drug will elicit this is the altered drug function okay so this gives some kind of response or effect whatever it is so there are two types of uh, responses one is continuous or graded response the another one is the dichotomous response guys so the continuous means like or graded means as you can see when you write an exam you get some grades right so 90 100 something or 95 percent grade so that means we can measure the grade in a continuously like from 0 to 100 for example so so the best example here is a blood pressure or heart rate can we me we can measure the blood pressure right so let, let's say 65 95 85 whatever it is so the dichotomous response is another kind of response where you have dichotomous guys. Di, remember two, di means two, right? Di, di is two. That means, remember the easy way to dichotomous, like two, chotomous means branching, two branches. Either yes or no. This is called the you know, yes or no response or all or none response. Or you can say quantal responses. 
That means, for example, the best examples is, let's say, headache. Whether the person is having a headache or there's no headache, you can ask me. Okay, sometimes I feel like my head is like paining a lot, and sometimes you may have a very minor headache, but still, you know, you have a headache, or uh, right. So that's a reason like yes or no response. Either you have a headache or you don't have a headache. Same with the cancer. Even you have one cell left over in the body that means still you have a cancer, right? The epileptic seizures is another one. Either the patient the patient will have a seizures or there are no seizures at all. Right? So this is called the dichotomous responses. So let's get into the next slide. So, usually most of the times, you know, uh, the effects are non-linear, but let's start with our linear, okay. For example, you have a, a drug, you know. So, in the linear effect concentration, you know, the next couple of slides we're going to discuss the linear and log linear or, you know, simple linear effect models. So, in these, we are going to you know assume that there is an instantaneous equilibrium is established between the concentration and the response that means the drug 100 percent the drug is in the body there's an equilibrium between the receptor and the drug that's how we are assuming it okay and we assume we also assume that there is n there are no active metabolites involved that means like if the for example if you say uh there's 100% concentration right now and out of that if 50% gets converted into metabolites that means the concentration is reduced only the 50% will elicit effect but today we are going to assume that there are no active metabolites okay so let's start with a simple linear effect model in the simple linear effect model that means we have certain effect range this is y-axis guys this is y-axis right the effect is y-axis and the concentration is x-axis so let's say we have some some data like you uh, know we dosed patient with some dose like over the time being like two you know and we measured the concentrations in various patients so in one patient that's 2 mg per ml the other patient is 4 mg and the other patient 6 and 8 and 10 right and we have noticed this kind of effect in those patients so as you can see, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong slide, guys. Okay. Um, so we have measured the concentration, as I mentioned. So let me select the pen quickly. Okay. So in one patient, it's two. The other patient, four. The other patient, six. The other patient, eight. The other patient is ten. So these are, again, these are continuous responses, guys. Continuous or graded response. So... <coughs> when we we have this concentrations and the effect in various ranges when we plotted we we came across with this kind of scenario the y is equal to mx scenario that means the slope is here two the slope here is two and the x-axis is the effect and the y-axis sorry the uh, i'm sorry i apologize the y-axis is the effect and the x-axis is concentration I'm having a tough time in having the coordination with my pen and the tablet. So anyway, so the effect is on y-axis and the concentration is on x-axis. So when we plotted this, we have this simple y is equal to mx plus equation. So that means for every one, you know, for every half unit, because y is equal to 2x means y by 2 is equal to x, right? That means for every 0 0.5 increase in the concentration my effect is you not know, doubling you know my effect is increasing by two not doubling by the way by two points so that's the reason like you know, we have this simple y is equal to mx plus c equation that means my slope is two and the effect is e and the concentration is c so for example if i need an effect of 19 sorry 18 right how much you know concentration do I need to give? We assume like you know here assume linear effect, say nine, right? So 
so 9 times 2 is 18 so this is a simple effect guys okay I'm going to stop this lecture here and I'm going to, uh, in the next lecture so let me pause